Technology Symposium 2021, sponsored by the Alabama Department of Rehabilitation Services, the Alabama School for the Blind Alumni and Workers Association, and the Alabama Institute for Deaf and Blind. CEU Open Code 95891. Our presentation will begin shortly. CEU Open Code 95891. Our presentation will begin shortly. CEU Open Code 95891. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Blair Callen, and I'm going to be introducing our next speaker for today. His name is Michael Papp, and he is the Program Manager for the Rehabilitation Engineering and Assistive Technology Program for Alabama Department of Rehabilitation Services. He's going to be doing a session today for us on Amazon products and their accessibility features. Enjoy the session. Hello, Technology Symposium participants. This presentation will be discussing accessibility at Amazon, and we will be going over several products and services available through Amazon that assist people or may be uh, beneficial for people with disabilities. My name is Michael Papp. I'm a rehabilitation engineer, and I've been with the assistive technology program at the Department of Rehab Services for over 21 years now. My background is in rehabilitation engineering, and I have been working with children and adults with disabilities for, for a very long time and helping them find these technology that they need to perform uh, the various tasks that they would like to be able to do. So a little bit about my program, uh, the Rehab Engineering and Assistive Technology Program is committed to excellence in providing state-of-the-art engineering and assistive technology services to consumers across the continuum, continuum of ADRS divisions to facilitate the dignity and independence of individuals with disabilities in the community, at home, at school, and at work. We work with consumers to find or develop assistive devices that will reduce or remove barriers presented by disabilities to improve their quality of life. Our staff work with both the Children's Rehabilitation Engineering Program the Vocational Rehab Program, including Blind and Deaf Services, and the Independent Living Program, uh, SAIL Program, uh, in providing a wide array of different types of services to all different types of disabilities. And so today, I'm going to be talking about some accessibility uh, features and products uh, available through Amazon, uh, specifically. Um, while the company sells a lot of access, uh, assistive technology, I'm just going to be talking about the products that uh, Amazon provides directly under their own brand name. Um, and I've had requests to talk about some specific items, and we'll go over that. Um, one thing, we'll go over Amazon Prime and do an overview of that. I'll be talking about some of the Kindle reading devices. Uh, we'll briefly discuss Echo Smart Speakers. I will show you the Echo Show, which is a fairly new smart speaker with a screen on it from Amazon. Um, we'll be looking at some Amazon appliances that they've recently come out with that work with the Internet of Things and with the Alexa um, devices. And we'll finally end with some of the future technologies uh, things that are either available on a limited basis or brand new devices available through Amazon that might be beneficial to people with disabilities. And so we'll start with Amazon Prime. I did have a request to talk about this specifically. And so what Amazon Prime is, it's a service that you can sign up for through Amazon. And I believe it costs uh, maybe about $12 a month. Um, it's about $120 a year, somewhere around that. 
uh, and it provides a wide variety of different benefits for people who've signed up for it. Um, I've had Amazon Primes pretty much since it came out because originally it provided free two-day delivery, which is a really big deal um, back then, and it's still a big deal. I think a lot of other retailers are trying to meet, match that, but it is available through Amazon. Um, there are some shopping benefits. They added Prime Video as well, which is really neat. And we'll talk about that briefly. Um, for people who are bibliophiles and really enjoy reading, there are some benefits there as well. Uh, and it also has the ability to share your account with one other adult um, or with your family. And so we'll talk, um, we'll try and touch on that a little bit as well. So, um, the number one thing, this is why I signed up for Amazon way back in the day, uh, was uh, Prime delivery benefits, and um, they had Prime shipping. And uh, for people who are members of Amazon Prime, they get free two-day shipping on products that are sold by Amazon itself. And one thing I do want to note, um, I've tried working with Amazon uh, as a vendor within the state as well, and they view themselves as a marketplace. And while they do sell directly items that uh, they stock and sell to people, um, they also have a service for companies, uh, small businesses and large alike, where those companies are able to sell products through the Amazon website. Um, those items normally are not available. Uh, um, available for prime shipping. They may offer free two-day shipping uh, if the company so desires, but it's not available for prime shipping. Um, Amazon, for some companies, will actually act as the warehouse. They will warehouse and ship the items themselves. Uh, in some other cases, Amazon will take the order, send it to the company, and the company will directly ship it. So that's something to be aware of when you are ordering things from Amazon. Um, there is an option when you're searching um, or just browsing on Amazon to select items that are sold only by Amazon. And so anything that is sold by a third party, uh, whether Amazon warehouses and ships those items for that third party or the third party warehouses and ships those items, you can, um, you can filter that out if you're concerned about it. Um, I have heard some people say that they prefer to only order stuff from Amazon um, because they have some more protections. Uh, they feel like uh, they're less likely to get ripped off or the items less likely to be misdescribed or something. So um, that is an option. Uh, another feature of the Prime shipping is that there's about 10 million items that are available within one day. Um, and this is a really neat thing. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that we've ordered, both grocery items and just garden implements and whatnot that you order it and it shows up the next day, which is, seems pretty amazing. It, it kind of spoils you a little bit. So um, that is another feature. Um, there's, uh, like I said, about 10 million items on the Amazon website that are available with one day shipping. It's kind of hard to imagine um, that that's a special thing on the Amazon website, 10 million items, right? How, how many, uh, <laughs> How many millions of items must they have uh, if only 10 million items are available that way? So uh, anyway, so that's something that is available. Um, another thing in areas where uh, Amazon um, recently, or I guess it was within the last couple of years, joined with Whole Foods, um, in areas where there's a Whole Foods, Prime members have access or may have access to free two-hour grocery delivery. Um, so in the Birmingham area, we do have Whole Foods in the Birmingham area. So I know that that is available. Uh, I've never tried this before, but I, it is available supposedly in the Birmingham area. I don't know about the availability throughout the rest of, of the state. Um, another feature available uh, for as a prime delivery benefit is for um, you can get free prescription delivery from the Amazon pharmacy. And so I've never tried this myself, but I do understand that there is an Amazon pharmacy and you can choose to get your uh, prescriptions from there. Um, I'm guessing that's if they are on your medical plan. Um, another feature that Amazon came out with a few years ago is called Key. Um, and this enables you, if you have a internet um, connected smart lock, 
or an internet connected garage door, uh, certain brands, um, you can give Amazon uh, delivery drivers the ability to unlock your door or open your garage door, put uh, items in, packages that you've ordered, and then close and lock behind themselves. I, again, I've never tried this before. Um, my garage kind of opens into my house. I'm not sure I want strangers to be able to get in there. Um, but if you live in an area where porch piracy is a real problem, this may be a benefit. Um, I think it would be good if you had a, uh, a camera system, a ring doorbell or something uh, to be able to view what's going on uh, when people are doing that. Um, but that is a benefit uh, that an Amazon Prime member may choose to, um, to take. Another thing uh, that's available, again, um, this helps with porch piracy, is something called Amazon Day. And you can set a preference in uh, Amazon when you place orders to have your orders all delivered on the same day. And you can set that day to be, say, Saturday, uh, which is what we have. And you can choose when you're checking out to have everything delivered all on Saturday at the same time. Uh, and that way, you want to have less boxes, but you can also plan on being home if you're expecting an order. Um, and if you're the sort of person who might order one or two things throughout the week from Amazon, you can get them all on Saturday and know that you're going to be home to, to receive those items. So that's another cool benefit that may be helpful uh, for individuals. Um, okay, so another benefit of Amazon, I mentioned reading. And so Prime Reading offers unlimited access on any device to over a thousand ebooks, magazines, and comics. Uh, so for bibliophiles, this is kind of a neat thing to have. Um, of course, especially if you have a Kindle device and you can have Kindle on your, um, on your Windows computer, I know that, and on uh, iOS, your iPads, and on Android tablets as well. So, um, so you have access to a lot of different books. Another cool feature for people who are really into reading is that once a month, um, you have the ability to download a free editor's pick. And these are books that the Amazon editors have picked out that they really like. Uh, and you can get that one book per month for free. And it's you can get that book before it is released. So you're actually getting a pre-release version of the book for free um, for you to read and enjoy. Um, another option available through Prime Reading is they offer discounts on some very popular magazines. And I think last I checked, it was like 99 cents for a four month subscription or something. Um, I have uh, subscribed to magazines through Amazon before and gotten large print versions, uh, specifically Reader's Digest, because that's what my mother likes. Uh, and so you might be able to find a large print version of magazines if you're interested in that available uh, through the Amazon website. You just have to check on availability for the specific magazine that you want. Uh, Prime streaming and digital. This is the other really popular uh, feature. I think most people are into Amazon Prime, both either for the shipping and or the uh, streaming uh, service that's available. And so the Prime Video offers um, all kinds of movies and films. Um, they do have a lot of free content that's available that uh, just like Netflix or Hulu, uh, they produce their own material. And you can also uh, either purchase movies like you used to be able to purchase a DVD or Blu-ray or VHS tape back in the day. Um, you can either purchase a movie and they also have movie rentals, especially for new releases. So uh, that is something that is available. Most of their videos uh, that I've seen, in fact, everything I've seen on Amazon has closed captioning and a lot of it has audio descriptions. And I'll show a demonstration of how that works. Another feature that they have is Prime Music. And just a regular Amazon Prime member has access to over 2 million songs and podcasts that they can listen to 
on their uh, various devices, um, either through the Amazon Music app or a podcasting app. Uh, and it's also available through the Kindle uh, devices as well. Um, I will note that there is a, a um, premium version of Amazon Music available that has even more content. Uh, but for most individuals, I would think that the uh, song catalog that they have access to uh, for free th if you pay for Prime uh, would be sufficient for most folks. They also have Prime Gaming, uh, which offers access to some free games and free content within games. Um, I'm not a gamer, so I can't really tell you the details uh, too much about that, uh, but that is another feature of Amazon Prime. And so I wanted to show you a brief demonstration of uh, both the captioning, how to set up captioning and the audio description in um, uh, using Amazon Prime Video. Uh, this happens to be on my computer so because I was able to record a screenshot of it. But uh, I do know that you can do this on the Roku and on the Fire Stick or Fire TV if you have those as well. And so this is um, um, this content is a movie called Knives Out. It was released uh, last year, actually. It was an Amazon exclusive that they produced. And um, it is a mystery, and so the opening is uh, mostly, it's all visual, and so there's good audio description. But in order to turn on the subtitles and um, alternative audio, there's a little, um, looks like a speech bubble type icon near the upper right-hand corner of the screen, and you can select that and go in and change, uh, set your subtitles with different sizes and colors. Um, the font is a sans serif. Um, you can also access different audio streams, maybe a foreign language um, streams might be available in there. And much of the content also has English audio described version. So here's a, here's a version of that. Mist hangs over the ground as two German shepherds run in slow motion across the leaf scattered lawn of a stately brick manor. The dogs dash out of the view as it creeps slowly toward the multi-story house. Inside, a mug that reads, My house, my rules, my coffee, is placed on a silver tray next to a plate of berries and a croissant. A woman with brown hair with flipped ends carries the tray through the house. A pair of red masks along with several porcelain figurines decorate a sitting room where dirty dishes and half-empty champagne dishes and half-empty champagne flutes litter the furniture. In the foyer, an intricately carved lion head tops a newel post at the bottom of the staircase. The brunette pack. And so I will note that the uh, audio description is not captioned. Um, the actual dialogue of the film is captioned. Um, I don't know who that might apply to, but that is something uh, that I have noticed. Okay, moving on. Uh, to some Amazon products now. Uh, we'll start with the Fire tablet. Um, this is a, basically it's, it's an Android tablet uh, with uh, a, uh, Amazon has modified the operating system slightly. It's, um, you don't have access to the Google Play Store uh, unless you hack the thing and turn it into developer mode. Uh, but they do have uh, specific Amazon apps um, designed to work specifically on this, but it's really designed as a reading tool. And so you can browse the web. They use the Amazon Silk web browser. Um, you have access to Amazon Shopping, Amazon Music, Audible, uh, the Kindle books, um, as well as other content. I think I've downloaded Overdrive onto mine as well. And so I can do some reading with it. Uh, one thing I will note, um, I purchased the cheapest one I could. I think it's a seven inch and it was like ad supported. I, it was like, it's $50. It was a $50 device. I would not recommend doing that. Um, I would pay a little bit more. Um, I should have done that in the first place, but uh, you can pay a little bit more and get a non ad supported version. And they seem to run a lot better as well. Uh, in terms of accessibility on these, the voice view screen reader, uh, which is Amazon screen reader uh, will work with the Fire tablet, uh, as well as a Bluetooth Braille display, they're supposed to be compatible. 
I've personally, I've never connected a Bluetooth Braille display to the Fire tablet, but uh, the documentation says that it'll work and there's pretty good instructions available for that. There is an explore by touch feature that can be, can be enabled on the uh, Fire tablet. Of course, Alexa is built into the Fire tablet as well. And so um, I know that uh, when I have my Fire tablet plugged in, if I start talking to Alexa, the Fire tablet will answer, um, just like a Fire TV or a Fire Stick. Uh, you do have access to that as well. Uh, there's a screen magnifier available. Uh, for the Fire tablet, as well as closed captioning on video and for various video apps, if that is something that somebody needs. Uh, another product that's been out for a long time in various iterations, but not a lot of people know about or have ever used is called the Kindle Paperwhite. And this is also a tablet reading device. It's more specific just for reading. Um, Last I checked, I don't even think you can browse the web on it, uh, but what it uses is something called e-ink. Um, it does not have an LCD screen. Uh, this screen is basically, it's grayscale. They say it's black and white, but in reality, it's very, very light gray, very, very, very light gray with a very, very, very dark gray on it. Um, and it, it doesn't feel like a glass screen. It has a, a more natural feel. And the nice thing with this is that there's no glare at all on it. You can read this outside and it's a very low power device. It's not like a tablet where you have to charge it up every few hours if you're using it. Um, the way the, the uh, display on this works is very low power. And uh, I don't think it's an active display. Um, the older ones did not have a backlight on it. I understand that the more premium version now has a light available so that you can read it at night, uh, but it is not something that lights up um, by default. Uh, so the screen is, is meant to be read like a book and it's a little bit more natural to read. Um, as a reading device is pretty neat because it's pretty simple to change the font face, the, the uh, font type if you would like. Uh, I think there's eight different font types currently available, including the open dyslexic font, uh, which is a specially weighted and shaped font for people with dyslexia. But you can easily change the size and the word and line spacing and the margins uh, while you are reading on this device. Um, I think the screens are between seven and eight inches on these. You can also invert the screen. So instead of having uh, dark text on a light background, you can do the uh, um, light text on a dark background. Uh, so that is available. There's not any colors in this though. It is it's strictly a black and white or white on black um, uh, text device. Like I said, it's specifically for reading. Um, now the newest versions or the newer versions can be used with the voice view screen reader, uh, but you have to have an audio adapter. There's no speakers built in. Um, so there's an audio adapter that's a USB device that uh, or plugs into the USB port that's used for charging. Uh, that's got some headphones on it. So you can use the voice view screen reader. I have not tried this, uh, but I understand it works okay based on video reviews. Um, it's also supposed to work with Bluetooth audio. So if you have a um, Bluetooth headset, you should be able to use it with that as well. And the current version, my understanding is you can also uh, use it with Audible, and that's not something that's been available. Last time I tried one, it didn't have that feature, but uh, I love Audible. I've been using Audible forever. And of course, Amazon bought Audible. Um, again, I've, I've had Audible since before Amazon owned it. Um, and so, but that is something now that you can use, uh, that you can put onto your paper white, but you do need to have the headset because there's no speaker built into this device. Um, if you are into reading books, um, and especially would like something where, um, you know, I think of, of the sort of person who might go on vacation and read three or four books a day, that's a lot of books to carry with you. Um, this would be something that, that might be very beneficial for you. And some libraries do uh, loan Kindle books through, or loan books that are available through Kindle as well. So that might be another uh, beneficial uh, method of, um, of obtaining library books.
All right, so uh, moving on, Alexa. Now, I have spoken at the Technology Symposium and a wide variety of other venues as well about Alexa and Echo devices. Uh, so I'm going to do a very brief overview of this, but then I'm going to talk about the Echo Show, which is a newer um, version of the Echo devices. Uh, so what is Alexa? For those people who don't know, um, it is an artificial intelligent virtual assistant that Amazon has developed. And originally it was put on the Echo smart speaker. Um, and it's also available on other Amazon products, as I mentioned, the Fire tablet and Fire TV and Fire Stick and Kindle Fires and all that stuff um, has access to it. Um, they also license uh, access to Alexa to other companies. And so there are uh, non-Amazon produced products that might have Alexa built into it. Um, some cars use Alexa as a smart uh, virtual assistant. Um, I've seen it built into clock radios and fans and lights and all different types of things. Um, and so what this does is internet connected and allows you to use your voice to interact uh, with the intelligent virtual assistant um, to access music and podcasts and read your audiobooks or, or have the audiobooks read to you. Um, to create to-do lists and alarms and timers and add things to your calendar. Um, the thing I love about it is to control Internet of Things devices, uh, which is for primarily environmental control, uh, which is a big part of what we do for people with physical disabilities, which is why we like it so much in the rehab engineering program. Um, you can access news and weather and recipes and a wide variety of other things as well. There's more features being added and companies are adding skills all the time uh, to Alexa. There's some online banking skills. You can order Uber, you can order a pizza if you order, uh, if you add the domino skill, for example. Um, so there's a lot of different things that you can do with Alexa. I'm not going to go into that uh, as much, but I do want to talk about um, some of the other Amazon products that work with Alexa or um, have come out. And so one thing, uh, I don't know if another group or if another presentation might go over stuff like this, but uh, Amazon has released a, a smart oven and a smart microwave. Um, the smart oven is a four in one device. It's a uh, like a really big toaster oven that combines a microwave convection oven, food warmer and air fryer. And so this is a countertop um, type device. Again, it's a size of a large toaster oven, um, but it has voice control through Alexa. And so this connects to the internet. It does have a button, um, an area that you can press on, on the control panel to access Alexa directly, or you can control it through your Amazon Echo devices uh, as well. And so it can do a variety of different things. Um, it does have presets, so you can tell it um, how long you want to cook something for, or if you have, like I'm cooking a pizza, cook, uh, you tell it to heat up three slices of pizza, for example, and it will automatically do that. It will announce to you when dinner is ready, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Uh, I wish I had an oven that would do that, um, but that is something that it can do. According to the information that I've been able to read about it, it can scan a food package with the Alexa app uh, that's on your phone, and it can cook your food automatically based on the instructions provided. Um, I have not actually seen a demonstration of this, but that sounds pretty neat. Uh, you would just need to have a smartphone with the Alexa app that you can use to scan it, uh, to scan the packaging, and then... Um, It'll follow the directions, I guess, or take the covers off or whatever needs to come off and put it in there and have it cooked automatically. Uh, and so this uh, smart oven available from Amazon is about $250 currently. And there's a, like I said, there's a variety of commands you can use. One example is Alexa preheat the oven. Um, that would be pretty neat. I can see that, um, you know, driving home, I might be a couple miles from the house and I can say, Alexa, preheat the oven and have it get started. So when I get home, it can just throw the pizza in and have it ready to go. Um, 
There is also an Amazon Basics microwave that has Alexa capabilities built into it. Now, this is a very small microwave. It's a 700 watt uh, microwave, which is, uh, I don't think they make a much smaller this than this. I think occasionally you might see a 600 watt, but this is, this is your tiny little office type or dorm room type microwave, um, just kind of as an example. Uh, but again, you can control this with Alexa. Uh, it has a little button on the front. Uh, that you can press for Alexa along with your regular control panel. And you can use commands like Alexa, reheat one cup of coffee, or Alexa, microwave five minutes on medium power. Um, one of the cool things in the marketing information I found, uh, I thought this was really neat, is that it will automatically reorder your popcorn for you. So um, of course, I'm sure Amazon is is making a lot of money off of that. But um, uh, it has a popcorn setting and will automatically cook your popcorn. And I guess when you run out of popcorn, it will reorder some for you. Um, the microwave itself costs about $75. And again, I've never actually tried one of these before. It just looked like a really neat item. Uh, one thing I do want to note uh, for folks with vision impairment, both the uh, four-in-one oven I was talking about earlier and this microwave, uh, do have the flat panel screen on it. Um, I don't appear to have any braille or any tactile, um, anything built in for that. So I'm a little disappointed that Amazon didn't do that. And it didn't seem like there was a kit or anything that you can order with, with the device to, to, uh, to do that easily. So um, if you're using one of these and you want to have access to the touch panel, uh, which I think is probably going to be necessary anyway. Uh, it's going to need some tactile indicators added to it. Okay, the Echo Show. Um, these have been out for maybe two or three years now. Uh, I recently purchased one during the pandemic to use as a video phone to talk with family. Um, and so this combines, uh, this is an Echo Smart speaker, uh, just like a uh, uh, Amazon Echo or Echo Dot or Echo Tap or any number of the Echo, other Echo devices, uh, but it happens to have a touch screen and a camera built into it. And so um, the screen sizes, uh, I think the standards, like there's a five inch, there's an eight inch, and there's a 10 inch. There's also a much smaller version. Um, I cannot remember the name of it, but it looks like it looked like a little snowball almost. Uh, I think it was called the um, I can't remember the name of it right off the top of my head. Uh, but it had a very tiny, very, very tiny screen on it and a tiny camera. So um, but the Echo Show seems like it's a much more usable device. Uh, in addition uh, to your standard Alexa, being able to access Alexa and set timers and, and all that other stuff, uh, it can display video and recipes and news stories uh, and song ly lyrics. Um, it's kind of a cross between, uh, well, be like taking a, uh, like a cross between an iPad and, and a standard Alexa uh, Echo device. Um, while it is kind of a cross between the two, it is not a full-fledged tablet. Um, you can do some browsing with the Silk browser on it, so you can go on to the web. I find it rather tedious to use it like that, um, but you can, you do have the capability of doing that. Um, currently, right now, you can also use the Firefox web browser, but I just recently learned as of the end of April, uh, actually, it's before the technology symposium. Um, it will not be available with Firefox. So the Silk browser is going to be the only thing that's available. But you can watch Prime Video. Uh, I believe it'll do YouTube and Hulu and some of the other video streaming services as well. Um, so some of the stuff that's built into it, it does have some nice visual accessibility features. Uh, that are available, um, like a screen magnifier. It does have tutorials built into it. So you can say, Alexa, how do I use the screen magnifier? Uh, it uses the voice view screen reader. And I'll show a demonstration of that and kind of go over some of the other uh, accessibility features that are built in. Um, you can, just like a regular Echo device, you can tell it to speak slower or faster and change the voice speeds uh, as well. Uh, another nice thing is it does have 
a lot more options built in for people with hearing impairments and for physical disabilities. And so um, one of the things when the echo devices first came out is that for someone who could not speak or had difficulty speaking clearly, they could not use an echo device. Um, with the echo show, you do have the capacity to either use an on-screen keyboard or connect a Bluetooth keyboard. Um, I have not tried to connect the Bluetooth keyboard, but I have used the on-screen keyboard and that works pretty well. Um, there's also a lot of captioning options available uh, for the Echo Show. So um, just to go over some of the, the non-vision related um, accessibility. So using the Echo Show without speaking, um, there's a feature you can turn on in accessibility called Tap Accessibility, uh, which places large icons on the screen um, that you can just tap with a finger uh, pretty easily to access the different features uh, it's a little easier than, um, you can still scroll through, but it's, it's easier to use. You don't require as many gestures, I think, to operate the uh, show device with that turned on. Um, and so there are default tiles that kind of come up. There's like eight different icons on the screen that you can touch, weather, time, music, alarm, news, shopping list. Um, happens to be everything that I use most common, the to-do list. Uh, just comes up by default on the screen. Um, you can actually add custom tiles if you would like. So if there's a feature, say someone doesn't use the traffic feature, um, they can add a tile. Uh, that might be something that's more appropriate. Um, there's also a quick question option where someone, um, like typically a, a user who can talk would just say Alexa and ask a question. Um, you can actually type the click, you can tap the quick question option and then type in your question just like you would speak it. Uh, so that does give someone who does not have um, functional speech uh, the ability to use the Alexa device. Um, Echo, Echo Show captioning, uh, this is pretty cool, is uh, for people who are doing video calls, uh, there's call captioning av uh, available. Uh, on the Echo. So when you're doing a video call, it uses artificial intelligence uh, to caption the call. Um, kind of reminds me a bit of the Ava app on iOS on an iPhone device. Um, closed captioning, of course, is available uh, through for all the video content that's available. Um, Alexa, there's also captioning that can be set up for Alexa. So the Alexa responses can be captioned. So someone who may have lost their hearing later in life, uh, but still um, communicates primarily verbally, uh, can still talk to Alexa, and then they can read the responses back. And of course, the speech rate is also adjustable, uh, and this can be beneficial, again, for people who are hard of hearing to slow the speech down a little bit um, so that they can understand better, especially in conjunction with the captioning features built in. And so um, some of the vision uh, related accessibility, I wanted to go over some of the stuff that the Echo Show can do. And so the first thing is called Show and Tell. And I'll just play a video demonstration that I shot earlier. The Show and Tell feature on the Alexa Show uh, uses the built-in camera, uh, which is located in the upper right-hand corner. In order to locate the camera, if you feel the top of the Alexa show, there is a switch that lets you manually turn the camera on and off. Uh, when the camera is on, the switch should be pushed to the left side of the slot. So in order to get this to work, you say, Alexa, what am I holding? Let's see. Another side. I read the following words fifty tablets, naproxen sodium tablets, two hundred twenty milligrams. 
So you hold the object in front of the camera about a foot above the uh, table surface. Alexa, what am I holding? Let's see. It looks like Colgate toothpaste. Sorry, something went wrong. Alexa, what am I holding? Let's see. It looks like her Z art washable marker. Well, they're crayons, but that's pretty close. And uh, so that is how the show and tell feature uh, works. And so you do, um, when you first use the show and tell feature on the Echo Show, it will go through a tutorial. And that tutorial is also available through the accessibility options. You can go into the settings and find accessibility and re, um, re, uh, restart that tutorial as needed. Um, but there are a variety of different audio prompts and sounds that the device will make telling you that you need to move um, the, uh, the product around that you're looking at um, so that you can identify it. Now, this isn't going to, like if you hold a ruler up or something in front of it, it's not going to identify just random objects. It's going to identify things for purchase. Um, and so if you found something on the floor and you didn't know what it was and you picked it up and put it in front of the show in all likelihood it would not be able to identify it so that technology still is pretty primitive um, but it is able to identify stuff with labels on it and uh, it does it also misidentifies things too I held up a bottle of hand sanitizer that was the special Elsa frozen two edition of the hand sanitizer and it told me it was the uh, frozen two movie so uh so yeah it's um it's still a work in progress but it is a feature that's built in and hopefully we'll get better in the future okay so next up a brief demonstration of the voice view screen reader and um again when you first start the voice view screen reader it will go through a brief tutorial and describe the various gestures that you need to use um, with the screen reader in order to access the device. I'm going to use it, uh, I'm just going to turn it on and kind of use it to read through the accessibility menu of uh, options so that you can see how that works. Alexa, enable voice view. Voice view ready, 135, 67 degrees. Cloudy. Alexa, double go to settings. Here's settings. And so I can use gesture settings. control. Bluetooth. Network. Display and wallpaper. Swiping my finger to the right Sound. side of the screen Three to times. scroll through the Do options. Not disturb. Camera. Communications. Device. Op it's very similar to iOS and how it operates. Things to try. Help. Accessibility. And then double tapping will select the item. Voice view, screen reader, two of And very similar to iOS. Screen magnifier, switch, not checked. Enables the use of gestures to magnify the screen. Three of 16. Color inversion, switch, not checked. May affect performance. Four of 16. Color correction, off. Five of 16. So now we're just scrolling through the accessibility options. Six of 16. RTT, switch, not checked. Enable real-time text, RTT, to use text to communicate during calls. 7 of 16, hearing. Now that RTT text that Alexa just mentioned, um, this is for people who are involved with a video call or just a, a dropping call on Echo. Um, you can also have... Uh, an app um, that you can actually use to connect to the Echo Show to do video calls to your smartphone. But for um, if, if for some reason you want to send a uh, text, type in what you want to say instead of verbally saying it, uh, you can type in. And so there's the capacity, if you have enabled this feature, 
to enable real-time text during the call, uh, whether it's a uh, drop-in call, echo-to-echo -echo call, or um, um, uh, it, it just has to go to the show or to a, uh, an Echo Show app on a uh, tablet device. Disabled, eight of 16, closed captioning, switch, checked. Show closed captions for videos when available. No. Closed captioning preferences, 10 of 16. Alexa captioning, switch, checked. Show captions for Alexa responses when available. Alexa captioning, closed captioning, closed captioning. Alexa captioning, Alexa captioning preferences. Call captioning, switch. Call captioning preferences, 14 of 16. And so the call captioning, again, if you're, if you're making a call um, using the Echo Show, it can caption, uses AI to caption the phone call. Um, accuracy is okay, <laughs> depending on the audio quality. Um, but that is something, again, that's built into the Echo Show. Alexa, enable voice view. Call captioning preference. K, Kilo. Accessibility, call captioning, switch, not call captioning, tap to Alexa, communication without speech, switch, not checked, enables calling, messaging, drop in, and announcements via touch and turns on transcripts for received messages. So that's a pretty neat feature as well. S. And um, so that's just kind of using voice view to go through the accessibility menu on the Echo Show. And you can enable and disable um, voice view and the screen magnification features just by asking Alexa to do so. Uh, so it's pretty simple to use. Um, one other thing I was asked to talk about was the barcode scanner. Um, and what this can do is scan a barcode on, your, uh, on a product that you want to purchase. Um, as far as I can tell, the only thing that the barcode scanner currently does is it will scan something and it will add it to your shopping list. Um, and so here's a brief demonstration of how that looks, uh, how it works. Alexa, scan this to my shopping list. Fill the frame with the product barcode. Soft soap, liquid hand soap pump. Antibacterial crisp clean has been added to your shopping list. And so in order for this to work, you have to know where the barcode is on the product. And you have to be able to line it up within a little box that Alexa puts up on the screen. So the camera is, is viewing the product and you have to move the product around until the barcode is lined up in, inside the box. I'm not sure how useful this is going to be for a lot of people. And uh, just in reading people's comments, and I feel the same way on this, it's easier for me just to say, Alexa, add soft soap uh, to my to my shopping list instead of having it scan this thing in. Um, it goes, it can get pretty detailed. It's like, uh, it'll add like a 16 ounce box or bag of rice or something. And it seems a little, a, a little more detail than you need. Um, if I'm out of milk, I just say add milk to my shopping list. Uh, so, but anyway, it does have a barcode scanner and hopefully this is a feature that will be enhanced in the future and get better. Alexa. All right. Uh, moving on to some of the future uh, type stuff for Alexa um, are wearables. And so um, this is kind of the, uh, the next wave, I think, of di smart digital assistants. And, you know, a lot of people carry Siri with them in their or the uh, Google Assistant with their um, with their phone device with them. And so Alexa's really been very limited. You have to pull up an app or something on your smartphone in order to get in there. Um, what the wearables do is these are devices that Amazon is experimenting with and producing uh, that will work uh, more directly with your smartphone with the Alexa app and enable you to access the features of Alexa without having to um, pull your phone out and open it up and, and, um, and access it that way. So it's, it's kind of like what the Apple Watch is to uh, your iPhone uh, might be. And so some of the things that they've come out with, 
um, our Echo frames. And this is currently a product that's available. These are eyeglass frames. Um, you can actually get prescription lenses for your frames uh, through lens crafters, at least according to the website. Um, so these are rather hefty frames available. And I do have a individual a video of someone who had purchased these and reviewing them. Um, they also have some earbuds that are available that are uh, Alexa or Echo earbuds. Um, that are, uh, they're just uh, smart earbuds so that you can listen to your music through your phone, but you can also press a button on them and access Alexa without having to get your phone out. Uh, and then there's a new product um, at one of the Amazon, um, I don't want to say it's really a benefit, but that's something that Amazon does is they, they have a special list of people who have access to one day purchase lists. And so Amazon will try out new products um, and there's a uh, special ring um, that fits on your finger. It's a ring for your finger uh, called the Echo Loop that was available in the, their prototype was available um, for people on their special prototype list uh, to purchase and try out. And so uh, um, we'll talk briefly about that. But uh, so the Echo Frames, here's a brief uh, two minute video description, kind of what that is. This is a review from it's Engadget. It's been more than a year since Amazon introduced the Echo Frames to the world. And this month, the connected glasses finally became widely available for purchase. For $250, you get hands-free access to Alexa wherever you go. Plus, you can also take calls, play music, and hear your notifications through the device's open-ear speakers, while still being aware of the sounds in your surroundings. To be clear, though, that's pretty much all the Echo Frames do. There's no display or camera. Still, there's potential here, especially for people who already wear glasses and want to interact with their phone without touching it. Compared to most smart glasses I've tested, the Echo Frames are surprisingly comfortable. I sometimes forgot at the end of the day that I still had them on. Only the medium large size I have is currently available for sale, and as someone with a fairly wide face, I like the fit. Despite having thicker arms that house components like speakers and mics, the frames didn't feel clunky. Devices like the Bose frames or Snap Spectacles are simply not as well made or comfortable. If you don't like Amazon's squarish design here or were hoping for more color options, you're out of luck. My review unit is in plain black, and there are just two other variants available, Tortoise and Horizon Blue, where the bottom half of the frames are blue and the top is black. Those looking for rounder frames or something more Warby Parker-like will have to wait till the company releases more styles. Under the Echo Frames' right arm sit buttons for volume control, a charging port, as well as what Amazon calls an action key. You can press this to access Alexa and double-click to mute the mics. Holding it down turns the frames on or off. There's also a touch-sensitive panel on the right side where you can swipe to hear details of a notification or tap to dismiss it. So that's a pretty good description uh, from a reviewer from the Engadget website of the Echo Frames. Um, they're basically big black eyeglass frames. Uh, the earpieces are fairly thick uh, because it has to contain the battery and the computer and all that other stuff, but it does connect to your phone um, and it enables you to have a wearable, um, something very easy to access uh, to be able to activate um, the Amazon Alexa device. The earbuds are very similar. Um, most people have tried or have seen like a, uh, the Apple um, earbuds or AirPods, whatever they call them. Um, the uh, Amazon version is very similar. It just has access to Alexa with a special button on it. Um, the Echo Loop, uh, this is something Jason had mentioned seeing, and I had to do a little bit of research on it. Um, but the Loop is the uh, ring. Um, and uh, I can't imagine this being very practical, but uh, it's, it's a rather hefty looking uh, titanium uh, black ring uh, that you can wear on your hand. It's got to be pretty hefty because it incorporates microphones and the speaker and the battery. Um, and it has like a haptic feedback, a thing that vibrates in it uh, built into it. And it's got to be all in a ring that goes around your finger. So uh, I've had watched some of the reviews uh, available on YouTube of people who had gotten these and tried them out. 
uh, reviews are kind of mixed. So I, I'm not sure this product uh, is going to be super practical. Uh, but just like the eyeglass uh, frames and in, in the uh, ear ear pods, there's other companies that have been experimenting with this type of technology as well in terms of how it interfaces with digital assistants and whatnot. Um, and so it'll be interesting to see how all this uh, stuff feeds out. Uh, but the loop, um, again, it was only available for one day, but it is something that might be uh, kind of like the glass frames is now, those are now available for anyone who wishes to purchase it. This might be a product that's coming out that would allow you to access your Echo device if you don't want to have something on your face um, or in your ears. Uh, you just press a little button on the uh, top of the ring or the side of the ring and talk into it, and it can access Alexa in uh, playback uh, something to you. To be honest, I think the speakers look really, really tiny. I can't imagine the sound quality would be very good. Um, I think there might be a lot of limitations in a device like this, but these wearables are something that a lot of companies are working on, and I think that we're going to see more wearable type devices uh, coming out that are mainstream, not just stuff like the Aria, but uh, things that might be more mainstream uh, from larger companies. So um, I will note this ring is supposed to be water resistant. Um, and it's uh, allegedly works with the Siri and Android assistant as well. So um, I can't really say too much else about it. It just looks like a big uh, bulky ring. Um, anyway, uh, so, Okay, so just moving on to uh, some wrapping up with Amazon uh, accessibility. Uh, if you type in, if you go to Google and Google Amazon accessibility, it'll take you to the um, to the Alexa accessibility website. And this site actually has a lot of great information for accessibility features built into the Alexa based devices uh, for people with hearing and mobility, speech and vision impairments along with uh, some really good how-to pages. And I found, I was pretty impressed with this website because if I was looking for a way to do something on Alexa, um, I could pretty quickly find it through this website. Um, and so I thought that was pretty useful. And so if you just Google Amazon accessibility or Alexa accessibility, it'll take you to the uh, accessibility website. Um, and there's a lot of detail on how to get stuff done there. And so with that, um, I know I have not covered everything about Amazon and disability accessibility, uh, but hopefully you have learned some new stuff today. Um, once again, my name is Michael Papp with the Alabama Department of Rehab Services. Feel free to email me at michael.papp at rehab.alabama.gov um, if you have any questions or comments. Um, if I can answer your question or point you in the right direction, I will try and do so. You can also reach me at 205-290-4460. Um, and of course, you can visit our website at rehab.alabama.gov. Thank you. Look at the team that made this conference possible at altechsymposium.net forward slash team. Check out our vendor exhibition at altechsymposium.net forward slash vendors and click on the Zoom link to join them live. CU close code 091 Eight seven. CU close code zero nine one eight seven. Look at the team that made this conference possible at altechsymposium.net forward slash team. CU close code zero nine one eight seven.